All right, welcome to science for week two of online learning. This week we are talking about animal life cycles. Um, you do not need to take any notes for this lesson and there is nothing that needs to be submitted, but I am hoping that you will pay really close attention to everything that's in the slides um, and a little heads up that there's gonna be a check-in to see what you've remembered throughout all of the lessons of the week at the end of the week just for you to do just to check and make sure that you're paying attention and watching the videos okay so if you would like to take notes you can but you don't have to and there's nothing to submit today at the end of this PowerPoint and video there is another link to another video that helps explain life cycles and gives you a little a couple cool experiments for you to try if you would like to do that it's my favorite Bill Nye Okay, and there's also some online games for you to play if you want to do a little bit more work today. Otherwise, you can just relax and watch the video, and I'm going to introduce animal life cycles to you. So we are starting with a quick review just of everything that we've already learned in our animal life cycles. So we talked about the characteristics of living things as well as the needs of living things. That's how we started our unit. So remember that animals are living things because they grow, they have cells, they have babies, they breathe or need air, they move, and they need food. And those were some of the important characteristics that we found that all living things have. Okay? We also talked about the needs, and remember that animals need air, water, food, and shelter. And just a little note to remind you that plants, remember they needed air, water, food, and space because plants need space to grow. So they don't need shelter like houses or dens like a bear. They need space just so they can grow. Okay. We also classified animals into two groups, which are vertebrates. And those are animals with a backbone. And invertebrates, with our, which are animals without a backbone. And then we continue to separate the animals based on those two groups. So we separated the animals into vertebrates and invertebrates, and then we separated them further. So remember, vertebrates have five groups in them, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. And invertebrates had periphera, cnidaria, echinoderms, mollusks, annelids, and arthropods. So over the course of this week, I'm only going to be focusing on the vertebrates for you so you only will need to we're only going to be looking at vertebrates uh, life cycles at least for this week all right and next week we'll probably look at invertebrates so last week we talked about animal diets okay and how animals can be then classified further into three groups based on what they eat so carnivores are animals that only eat meat, herbivores are animals that only eat plants, and omnivores are animals that eat plants and meat. So these diets, they help make up a food cycle or circle or food chain. So if you look here, you'll see the food cycle. So if we start at a leaf, okay, the caterpillar eats the leaf. So the leaf gets eaten by the caterpillar. And then the caterpillar is just hanging out on the tree or leaf, just minding its own business, munching away. And then suddenly a bird swoops in and eats the caterpillar. Okay? And then the bird's really happy because the bird is full because it's eating the caterpillar. And it's not paying attention. And then it gets eaten by a fox. Okay? Because foxes are also very hungry and foxes eat birds. And then when the fox dies... Okay, it bodies decomposes into the soil. Remember how we talked about the things that were in the soil and we said that there were bits of dead animals and plants in the soil and that gives the plants nutrients, okay, which is what they need to grow. So then the cycle starts again. The tree grows, the leaves come out, they get eaten by the caterpillars, the caterpillars get eaten by the birds, the bird gets eaten by the fox. And then when the fox dies, its body decomposes into the soil, which then gets, we have the plant, okay? So here we have the food chain, which again, the sun helps the grass grow, the zebra eats the grass, and then the zebra gets eaten by the lion, because lion 
are predators and they like to eat meats because they're carnivores as well. Okay, so the zebra is a herbivore, and remember how we said that herbivores are often prey because they only eat plants, and that the prey get eaten by the predators, which are carnivores. All right, so that is the food cycle. But there's another cycle that animals have, and that is called the life cycle. And what happens in the life cycle is basically just what happens in the animal's life. So they give birth, they grow, they reproduce, and then they die when they're old, okay? So all animals are born. We know that some animals are hatched in eggs, like reptiles, fish, amphibians, and birds, and that some are born from the mum. They come straight from the mum's body, and that's mammals. Then they grow up to adulthood, which they start as babies, then they become ch children, and then teenagers, and then adults. And then when they're adults, they have babies, okay? And then when they're very old, they die. So I looked up quickly just so you guys could see how old some of the animals were. And I found that a clam can live for 507 years. That's the oldest clam that they have ever found. I also found that the second oldest animal on Earth was a shark. And that was 392 years old. And then I looked up. How old a human can be, and a human is 122 years old. So the oldest human in the world was 122 years old, which I think is pretty old, okay? So the thing that you need to remember is each type of vertebrate or animal or invertebrate, okay, they all have a different life cycle, but they all share the same four steps, okay? And that is birth, growth, reproduction, and death. Okay, but we are going to look at the life cycles without looking at the sad part, which is the death part. We are going to be looking at just how they grow and reproduce. Okay, so we're starting with amphibians. And the adult frog is going to lay the eggs, okay, and then when the eggs hatch or break apart, they become tadpoles. So those would be babies. And then we have tadpoles with two legs because remember, amphibians are the animals that are born in water. They spend the first few months in water. And then as they get older, they then venture out onto land. And that's why they're an amphibian because they live in both water and land. Okay? So they have a tadpole with two legs. So they start off in the water and they have two legs. Then as they become teenagers, they grow four legs, so they grow two more legs, and then they become a frog, okay? And then again, it starts again. The adult frog lays the eggs, the eggs become the tadpole or the baby, the eggs hatch, they become the tadpole baby, then the child, which is the tadpole with two legs, tadpole with four legs would be like a teenager, and then the teenager grows up to be an adult frog. So that is the amphibian life cycle, or life cycle of a frog, if you want to be super specific. Now, when we have a bird life cycle, you see we also have an egg. And this one's pretty simple. Again, the chicken, the adult chicken, lays the egg, the egg hatches, and then we have a chick. The chick grows up to be an adult. The adult lays the egg, the egg hatches, then we have the chick. The chick goes up, and so forth, and it just continues, which is why it's a circle, okay? For fish, we also have an egg, which you can see here. So again, the adult fish lay the egg, then we have little baby fish, which are called, called larva, and then we have juvenile fish, which are like teenager fish, and those grow up to be adult fish, and then they grow it, they lay eggs, then we have baby fish, then we have juvenile fish and adult fish. And again, it's just a circle or a cycle. Okay? Pretty easy. For reptile, I have the life cycle of a turtle. And again, the adult lays eggs. The eggs hatch. They become babies. They grow up to be children and then teenagers and then adults. And then they lay eggs again. They hatch. They become children and teenagers and 
so forth. And it just continues. It's just a continuing, ongoing circle or cycle. So the next one we have is of a mammal. And this one, you'll notice, is the only one that doesn't have an egg. And that's because if we remember when we were learning about mammals, mammals are born from their mums, okay? So they're not born, they don't come from an egg. They come from their mums. So their mums give birth to them, okay? So we have the adult tiger here, and the adult tiger gives birth, okay, to some baby tigers. The baby tigers grow up. So here we have a little cub, and the cub grows up to become an adult, and then the cycle starts again. So the tiger has babies, the baby grows up to become an adult, and it continues on and on and on, all right? So those, that's just a quick introduction to animal life cycles. We are going to look more closely at each of the animal life cycles in amphibians, reptiles, birds, fish, and mammals over the course of this week. Um, but I'm going to introduce a little sneaky topic for you today, and that is Ms. Kari's life cycle. So as a human, we go through the same life cycles, okay, as all animals. So we start as babies, then we grow up to be children, just kind of like what you guys are now. I'm a lot smaller than you guys are. And then we become teenagers, so that's me before I was a teenager, just becoming a teenager. That's me as a teenager. And then as we grow from teenagers, then we become adults, okay? Now, in English this week, there's a sequencing timeline activity that you will be completing, and it has a little bit to do with your own life cycle. So something you can think of tonight is maybe some pictures of you throughout your life. Maybe think of five or six, okay? So you can start thinking about what pictures you might want to use for your timeline project. And we'll be explaining it a little bit more tomorrow. But this is what my life cycle has been like so far. Okay? So again, from a baby. So I was born. Then I grew up a little bit. I'm still a, probably a baby here. Maybe like one or two. Probably two, I think. And then from a child... I grew up to become a teenager, the scary teenagers, and then I became an adult, all right? So just something to think about to get your minds going for tomorrow, all right? Just so you can start thinking about your own life cycle and your own timeline projects. So if you want to know a little bit more about life cycles before tomorrow, before we dig into the different animal classifications, there's a video from Bill Nye the Science Guy, which you know how much Miss Kay loves Bill Nye, all right, almost as much as Uncle Jack, and I also put some games on there for you so you can have a look at some of those life cycles. So have fun, remember you have nothing to submit today, start thinking a little bit about your own life cycle and maybe some pictures that you can do or some important events that happened in your life, okay? And I will see you back here tomorrow for a little bit more science.